Welcome back, my name's Steve and thank you for joining me on my photography journey. Today I want to talk about some apps. This is apps for my phone that I use for photography. So there's three of them that I want to talk about. One is the Nikon Snapbridge app. The second one is Photo Pills and the third one is called TPE. I use them all for slightly different things. I know some of them better than others. Let's have a little bit more detailed look into what I actually do and why I use them. So first up is the Nikon Snapbridge app. And the main thing that I use this for is for remotely controlling my camera. So you can use either Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Uh, those are built into the Z5 and it connects to the app on my phone and I can then remotely control the camera. It's, it's as simple as that. So when it's with Bluetooth, you can just press a button to take a picture. When it's with Wi-Fi on the phone screen, you can actually see what the camera can see. You can see through the viewfinder and what the image is. You can adjust the different settings and then you can focus and take your picture. You can adjust things like your ISO, your aperture, your shutter speed. It basically gives you complete control of the camera. One thing that I particularly like to use that for is for taking pictures of myself. You can set a timer, you can set the camera to take various different amounts of pictures so that you kind of get a more natural self-portrait. Um, it, it's also quite useful in group situations. So one thing that I used it for was a family wedding. We were watching it being streamed from New Zealand and I had the camera set up so that it had all of us around the table um, centered in the frame. And then I could just take pictures at random intervals with my phone. And using the timer on there, it meant that we were all talking, we were all engaged with each other. No one was looking at the camera, no one was paying any attention to the camera. And it was just taking our picture every now and again. And that worked perfectly like that. I got some really good pictures from that. Another thing that I use on there is the GPS coordinates. So when my phone is on, it's in my pocket when I'm out taking pictures. The location services are on on my phone. So that means that my phone knows where I am. It uses these coordinates on the Nikon Snapbridge app to talk to the camera and it will link up the picture that I'm taking with the coordinates of where I am at that time so that all of my pictures have a GPS tag on them basically so that I can look at the map on Lightroom and see these pictures were taken here, these pictures were taken there. Have a look at my Lightroom video where I go into more detail about the map module in there. Another thing that's quite useful is being able to download pictures straight from my camera. So without having to plug my camera into my computer or take my SD card out, I can wirelessly download pictures from the camera onto my phone which is great to just show someone a snapshot that I've just taken or to do a little bit of editing. So if I don't have my computer with me, but I've got my phone, I can download some pictures, use Lightroom on my mobile to edit them. You download them in a raw format, same as you would if they were going onto my computer. So that just means that I've got more options when it comes to editing. I don't have to carry my laptop around with me everywhere that I go. After the Nikon app, the, the second most frequently used one that I've got is photo pills. This is really useful for a few things. One, for planning when you're gonna go out and take pictures. So it gives you information about sunset, sunrise, uh, the moonrise, what time golden hour is, what time blue hour is, and it does it for the day. You can look ahead, you can look backwards even and you can look at different locations so that you've got the most accurate and up-to-date information. So if you're planning a trip, you can get an idea of when the sun will rise in a particular place. You've got a planning function, which will allow you to put a pin down somewhere and look where the sun will rise, where the moon will rise, and again on a different specific day. So if I was traveling somewhere next week, I could have a look at that location, see what the weather's gonna be like, where the sun might rise and things like that so that I can make the most of being there. One of the other most useful parts of it is a calculator for time-lapse. So you can put into there how long you want your clip to be, the final clip. You can put in 
how long you want to film for. So if you're looking at sunset or something, then an hour, maybe two hours, something like that, depending on what you're taking pictures of. Then you can say what frame rate your video will be at the end, and then it will work out for you how many pictures you need to take and what interval they need to be set up for so that you can fill that amount of time with those many pictures so that you've got your time lapse settings correct and you can do it to work out what interval to shoot at, how long the clip will be or or how long the event duration will be. So you've, you've got so much control over what you can work out with that. And then the other part that's quite useful when I'm taking landscape pictures is the depth of field calculator. So with this, you put in what camera you've got, you put in the lens that you're using, so the focal length that you're going to take a picture with, the aperture, and how far away the main subject is. And then this will tell you, when you focus on that main subject, how much is in focus. So you've got an idea of what's the closest thing that will be in focus, what's the furthest thing away that will be in focus, so that you can then work out whether you need to stack your image or whether everything is as in focus as you want it to be. And then the third app that I use is something called TPE. And this is quite useful for looking on a map as to where some will rise, some will set, what time it will rise and things like that. This is the app that I used first of all. So everything that I've used TPE for, I've realized that I can actually now do in PhotoPill, so it's not something that I use that often. Um, there's a lot of information on there, and I think their website has got quite a few articles to, to help with photography in general. Um, so yeah, I, do, I don't really use TPE anymore, so I may not talk about that one so much in this video. If you have any other suggestions of apps that might be quite useful or do something slightly differently that I could incorporate into my workflow, then just let me know. Leave a comment down below. It's always good to find out what other people use and what different tools people use particularly as you've always got your phone in your pocket, it, it makes sense to have something useful on there to help with photography. The other things that I could mention really are some kind of maps, so Google Maps or Apple Maps. Apple Maps is the one that I tend to use. And then the other thing is the Lightroom app, which, as I said, you can download the pictures from the camera onto my phone using the Nikon app, and then I can edit them in the Lightroom mobile app. I can also take pictures with that app. So I've mentioned before in my iPhone photography video that I like that app because you've got more control. It saves it as a raw file. So you've got more editing options as well. Um, so that actually should be in my list of apps to use as well. So there are a number of apps that are quite useful. If you've got any other ones that you would suggest, just let me know, leave a comment down below about them. It's always interesting to know what works for other people, how they incorporate it into their workflow. So yes, leave those down below. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I will see you again next week on my photography journey. So have a great week. Bye.